we always talk about our, our kids and our children. And the question always is, what do we want to pass on to them? But what about our senior citizens, too? The thing that the arts does is it integrates all of us. In our organization, Jazz and Lincoln Center, we always say we don't believe in any gaps of any kind. There's no such thing as a generation gap. And I'll tell you the, the story of how our band got together. And in, that, in the story of that band is also something important about education and important about the arts. Because the thing that always hurts you is what you don't understand that you don't know. So I had played music for many years. We had a band that got together and all the surviving members of Duke Ellington's great band from 1955 to 1974 were going to play with members of my septet and we were all in our late 20s, early 30s. We sit down in this rehearsal with all these old men. They are like our grandfathers. We start to play and of course we're used to playing loud. We don't know that it's loud because we've only played loud our entire lives. We have no idea we're playing loud. That's how we play, loud. <laughs> so we start playing, and a great Frank West, who actually was not a Duke Ellington band member, but a Basie band member, stopped the band and asked the question, why do you young play so loud? That was the first time anyone had ever told us we were playing too loud. So we started thinking, why are we playing so loud? Why are we playing so loudly? He said, when you play that loudly, you cannot hear anything that's going on. And if you can't hear, you can't play music. So from that moment, we started to concentrate on playing at a much softer volume. But in that experience, we began to understand that there's no such thing as the generation gap. We learned so much from those members of the, of, of, the, of the Ellington Orchestra and the Basie Orchestras about how to project our own personalities, how to play in balance, the significance of living history, the fact that we're part of a continuum, and that continuum has produced some of the greatest art on the face of the planet Earth. And the question for us is why don't we feel it's important for our kids to know this? Why is it that it's always a struggle for us in the arts to say, the, the American identity is something significant to bring to the world. Why is it always uh, the feeling that the arts is the last thing to think of? And I'm going to conclude by saying that many times uh, we justify training in the arts to say it helps people with math or it helps them with sciences. Or Music is super math. Math helps people with music. Hmm. Music is not, we don't, we don't play music to learn how to add, and we, we, we know how to do that. Calculus. Music is a, is, a, is, is a way to converse and to face the world with confidence. And our country has produced some of the greatest musicians, some of the greatest thinkers in the arts, some of the greatest poets. It's incumbent upon us to, set, to take a leadership role and say, these things are important to us, and in this time, our, our time of need, it's important for us to return to our real identity and to integrate our country in fact, because it already is. We're talking about John Philip Sousa, John Philip Sousa's music and the marches, how they related to ragtime, and how ragtime is related to two-beat music. And as we go around the country, we go around the country and meet with people all the time, I often wonder, why would 60 or 70 parents in Brighton, Illinois, wait for an hour and a half to two hours after a concert so that their kids could meet with some musician from somewhere to talk about music. Why do people wait in Sacramento, California? Why do people wait in all kind of towns, small, large, hours after concerts with kids, two, three, thirty? Why do band directors and other teachers drive 200 miles to a gig, go through a two-hour concert and sit and wait when they have kids to get home so that you can address them for 30 or 40 minutes after a concert and talk to their kids about how we are all together and the significance of our music. Why do people have such emotion around this issue? It's because we know that that is the life that we've lived and it is the most significant thing for us to pass on to our kids the best of who we are and to speak about the arts. There is no greater task that confronts our nation in this time and come into grips with who we are from an artistic standpoint. The arts are laid out for us. The artists have done their work. It's up to us to capitalize on the riches that they have bequeathed us and to say this stuff is so important and so valuable, and it is.